the topic of this last short talk in the month of Ramadan is from this Ramadan to the next Ramadan and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I hope that almost all the viewers who are watching they may have fasted for the complete month of Ramadan and inshallah I hope and I pray that all of you may have done your Qiyam prayed the Qiyamul Layl in all the nights of Ramadan and surely you may have kept awake for the last 10 nights so that you get the Laylatul Qadr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 30 that those who say that Allah is my Lord and they are steadfast and firm the angels descend down from time to time and they say that do not fear nor have any grief for there is glad tidings that inshallah you shall enter Jannah you shall enter the bliss so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse in Surah Fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 30 that all those who say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord they believe in Tawheed and they are steadfast and firm the angels descend down and they tell them that do not grieve nor have any fear and they give them glad tidings the Bashara of Jannah of Paradise of eternal bliss a similar message is repeated in Surah Al-Kaf chapter number 46 verse number 13 where it says indeed those who say that our Lord is Allah and they are steadfast and firm they shall have no fear nor shall they grieve and the next verse says verse number 14 that they shall be companions of the garden of Jannah our beloved Prophet Muhammad said it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim volume number 1 Hadith number 450 Allah's Messenger said that the five daily Salah the five daily prayers and from one Juma to the next Juma and from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan is expiation of all your sins as long as you keep away from the major sins our beloved Prophet has said that when you pray five times Salah or from one Juma to the other or from one Ramadan to the other Ramadan as long as you are steadfast in this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins as long as you stay away from the major sins and it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari volume number 8 Hadith number 6465 Aisha anha she asked the Prophet that which deed is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet replies that Allah loves those deeds which are constant, are done regularly. Even if they may be small, the deeds that are done regularly are more beloved to Allah even if they are small. That means we have to be constant in it. We have to be steadfast, we have to be firm in it. Alhamdulillah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He accept our fasting our qiyam our dua in Laylatul Qadr and may he forgive all our sins now since we hardly have in Malaysia hardly one hour 45 minutes before Ramadan ends in other parts of the world few hours and some parts of the Indian subcontinent one day and few hours since Ramadan is going to end what is our duty what is our role from this Ramadan to the next Ramadan and it's very important that all of us that we were so steadfast in our Qiyam in our charity in in our Dua in our supplication in our repentance and all these things we pray to Allah may we remain the same throughout the year the best 
for us Muslim is to continue doing all the deeds that we have been doing in the month of Ramadan. If we cannot, then at least continue most of it. But one thing the minimum should be done is that what you were doing before the start of this Ramadan, in the earlier months of Shaban and Rajab, etc. After this Ramadan, it should be better than the months that were prior to the month of Ramadan. Minimum, this is minimum. Let me give an example. That may be some of the Muslims may not be very particular in the Salah, maybe they are offering only three times or four times Salah. See to it, this was before Ramadan. See to it that after Ramadan you pray all the five times for Salah. If maybe you are praying at home and didn't go to the mosque before this Ramadan, see to it that after this Ramadan you pray five times in Jamaat in the mosque because it's a fard for the men to pray in Jamaat in the mosque. And some scholars like Imam Madhabi says, it is a major sin if you do not pray in Jama in the mosque without a valid reason. Maybe some of us are praying five times Salah, but before Ramadan we were not praying the Sunnat al Muqtada. After Ramadan, see to it that you start praying Sunnat al Muqtada. If you are praying Sunnat al Muqtada before Ramadan, start praying Tahajjud, the Qiyamul Layl, or start praying the Salatul Duha after sunrise. If you are praying all these, then at least after Ramadan, you start praying Sunnat Gair Moqada, that's 10 Raka. You should see to it that you should pray much more than what you were praying before the start of this Ramadan. So your Salah, your Qiyam should increase more after this Ramadan. There are other things that you should take care of. If you are giving charity, see to it that you increase in your charity. If you are not giving any extra charity besides the zakat which is fard, see to it that you start giving charity after this Ramadan. And my suggestion is that you commit a percentage of your earnings in charity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Besides the fard zakat that you have to pay. Maybe you can start with 5% of your earnings every month given charity. Increase to 10%. And believe me, the more charity you give, the balanced amount which is pending with you will be much more than what it was before. My suggestion is make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your partner in your business. Give maybe 20% of your income, whether it be your salary, whether it be your business earning, 30%. My suggestion is that if you want to be on the high level, see to it that you give more of your earnings in charity and keep less. Give more than 50% of your earnings, of your salary, of your income, of your profit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make him your partner and make him your major partner. See to it that you will benefit more than what you were before, even in this worldly way. Even if you're poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the percentage, not at the amount. Maybe there's a rich person who's earning a million dollar a month and he gives ten thousand dollar a month in charity. There may be a poor man who may be earning a thousand dollars, but he he may be giving a hundred dollar in charity. The rich person who's earning a million dollar and giving ten thousand dollar in charity, he is giving one percent of his earning in charity. The poor person who is earning a thousand dollar and giving hundred dollar, he is giving ten percent of his earnings. That means the poor man, inshallah, will get ten times more sawab, even though he is given hundred dollar, as compared to the rich man who is given ten thousand dollars. And my suggestion is that all of those who have not committed, commit a percentage of your earning in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you have committed, increase your percentage. If you are giving five then give 10%. If you are giving 10, give 20%. If you are giving 20, give 30%. If you are giving 30, give 40. If you are giving 40, give 50. My suggestion is give more than 50% of your earnings in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the balance remaining with you will inshallah be much more than what it was before. Increase in charity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 
verse number 261 that if you sow one grain of corn in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give you seven years each year having hundred grains that means one grain you give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give you seven hundred grains that means seven hundred times profit in in business terminology Allah will give you seventy thousand percentage of profit in no business I know do you get seventy thousand percent profit 700 times you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your charity increase your recitation of the Quran increase your fasting now in the month of Ramadan it's a fard fast this is the only fard fast for a Muslim after Ramadan see to it that you continue your fasting as the beloved Prophet said that all those who keep, all those who keep the sixth fast of Shawwal after the fast of Ramadan, it is as though they have fasted for the full year. Now, how does the person calculate? Why did the Prophet say six fast? Why didn't he say five fast or seven fast? The Fuqaha, they say, as Allah says, that he increases the reward minimum ten times. So, if you calculate the full month of Ramadan that you fasted, one lunar month has got 29 and a half days. Sometimes 29, sometimes 30. So 29 and a half multiplied by 10 becomes 295 days. Then additional 6 days multiplied by 10 becomes 60 days. So 295 plus 60 is 255. And a lunar year has got 254 years, uh, 254 days. One lunar year has 254 days. That is the reason the Prophet said that if you follow up with your fasting of Ramadan, you fasted for the full year, follow up with 6 days of Shawwal, it is as though you have fasted for the full year. Then after that, there are other fasts that you can keep. And we know that a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the best fast after the first fast of Ramadan is the fast of Muharram. And if you fast in Ashura, a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that all the sins of a previous year are forgiven. The other fast which is very important after the, Ram, after the Ramadan fast is the fast on Arafah the day of Arafah, the ninth of Zil Hajj. And the Prophet said that if you fast on the day of Arafah, if you are not doing pilgrimage, if you are not doing Hajj, then Allah will forgive your past, the sins of your past one year and the sins of one year ahead, the future year. And the best is to fast all the first nine days of Zil Hajj. And along with the fast of Ashura, if you can fast the ninth day or the eleventh day is good. If you fast 9, 11, 9, 10 and 11, that's the best. The other fast which I recommend by the Prophet is that you fast on the Ayyamul Bid, the white days, the days of the full moon, that is the 13th, 14th and 15th of the lunar year. And the Prophet said, if you fast three days of Ayyamul Bid, three days every month, it is as though you have fasted the full year. Again, the same logic. 3 days multiplied by 10 become 30 days. So every month if you fast for 3 days, you are fasting for the full month. If you fast every 3 days of every, if you fast 3 days of every month, you are fasted for the full year. The Prophet also recommended us that we should fast on Mondays and on Thursdays. And these were the two days that the Prophet fasted. And so these are the options that have been given by the Prophet that after the first fast, you can fast. And one of the best fast is the maximum you can fast is the fasting of Dawud alayhi salam. And the Prophet said that Dawud alayhi salam fasted every alternate day of the year. That is the maximum. To fast all the days of the year, it is prohibited. The maximum you can fast is alternate days. But naturally, besides the days which are recommended, as I mentioned earlier. So the option is yours. So once you have finished the fasting of Ramadan, you continue fasting as much as you can in the option that I've been given. And I request that at least you don't miss the fasting of Ashura, the fasting of Zil Hajja, and the fasting of Shawwal. If you can, fast the Ayyamul Bid also. If you can fast, also fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And the maximum anyone can do is the fasting of Dawud every alternate day of the year. As I mentioned first about the Qiyam, 
I mentioned about the charity, I mentioned about psalm, fasting, then is reading of the Quran. Read the Quran as much as you can. Maybe in Ramadan you were, you were reading the Quran, but after Ramadan you stop reading. See to it, you start reading. If you were reading maybe for 15 minutes before Ramadan, after Ramadan read at least half an hour. If you were reading half an hour before Ramadan, start reading for 45 minutes. Read as much as you can, there is a great deal of sawa. Increase in your supplication, in your dua. As many dua as you can, after the salah, the other dua for your daily activity. See to it, you increase. Increase in your istighfar, in asking for forgiveness, asking for repentance. If as much as you increase, it's better. So after Ramadan, you should find a marked change in most of your ibadah as compared to before Ramadan. And today is the last day of Ramadan in most parts of the world. Some parts are the second last day. We hardly have about maybe one and a half hour left in Malaysia before we end Ramadan. Few hours in other parts of the world, maybe more hours in other parts of the world. See to it that before the devils are unchained, you make a decision. You make a commitment to yourself that inshallah, after Ramadan, I'll pray more. Besides the Fard Salah, Sunnat Mawqidah, Sunnat Gaur Mawqidah, you should read the Qiyam, Qiyam longer if you are reading 15 minutes, read it for half an hour, if you are reading half an hour, read for one hour, see to you, you read uh, Salat al duha as much as you can, see to you increase in your charity before the Ramadan ends, see to it that you, ha you keep more psalm what you were keeping before Ramadan. Increase in your recitation of the Quran, in your supplication, in your istighfar, in asking for forgiveness. See to it that your ibadah and as a whole, what your life was before the start of this Ramadan should be much more after this Ramadan ends. People normally ask me that why very often the Muslims after Ramadan, you see that Many of the Muslims, the Ibadah goes down, the enthusiasm goes down. Why? What is the reason? One of the reasons is that many of us Muslims, we do the activities of Ramadan more as a custom rather than a Ibadah. You know, it's customary for most of the Muslims. Now Ramadan has come, okay, we have to pay Tarawih. They will not miss Tarawih. They may miss the Fajr Salah in the morning, you know, but Fajr Salah is a Fard. But because it's a custom, they follow more of the culture rather than the deen. So they're particular about the custom and they neglect the faraid. The other reason is because many of their friends are doing the activities, they join them and as though it's part of a, a friendly gathering rather than ibadah and they do the activities without paying attention on the main reasons and the purpose of these activities of Ramadan. The third reason can be because of the weak faith. That they are enthusiastic, they do in the month of Ramadan and they overdo it and you find in, in many countries in the first few days of Ramadan the mosques are full for Tarawih then it keeps on declining and keep, it is the least towards the end which should not be the case. And the last and the major reason is because the Satan and the devils they are chained during Ramadan, so you find the ibadah is more, the activity is more, after Ramadan they are unchanged and that's the reason that we go back to our old wrong habits. What is the solution for this? The solution for this is that number one, you should have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 160, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If Allah forsakes you, then who is there, then who can help you? So let the believers put their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one is have faith and trust in Allah. If Allah is with you, no one can overcome you. No one can defeat you. If Allah forsakes you, then no one can help you. The best dua you can do is from Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number eight, which says, Rabbana la tuzi qulubina. Rabbana, 
ربنا او مائی لارڈ لیٹ ناٹ مائی ہارٹ ڈیویٹ لیٹ ناٹ مائی ہارٹ ڈیویٹ آفٹر داؤ ہیز گائڈیڈ اٹ یو آر دا ون ہو آر گیور باؤنٹیز اینڈ یو لو فار گیونگ پیپل سن تو یہ وی پرین ٹو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ربنا لا تزی قلوبنا بعد حدیتنا و حبلنا من لدن کا رحمہ ان قنت الوحب that let not my heart deviate after you have guided us that means in Ramadan we were the highest of ibadah we were the best so we are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that once you have guided us let not the heart deviate and you are the one who are giver of bounties and of mercy and blessings so ask Allah for help pray to him that he keeps you on the same path and steadfast as you are in the month of Ramadan number two see to it that You are in the company of the muttaqeen. You are in the company of those who are more pious, who are more righteous. Because the company influences you a lot. See to it that your friends are those friends that offer five times Salah in the mosque. See to it that your friends are those which keep away from the major sins as well as from the minor sins. See to it that you have friends who always do all the farayas, who do as much as mustab as possible. So when you are in the company and if the Satan tries to deviate you, these friends will keep you on the straight path. So it's very important that you keep friendship of the people who are muttaqi, who are qanateen, who are, who are righteous, who are devout, who are on the straight path. Number three, regularly, as often as possible, keep on attending the durs, the lectures, the talks of the scholars who are authentic and who get you closer to Allah and His and his Rasul. Number four, read books, read the Quran, read it along with the translation. So let your heart soften, let your heart cry. Read the translation of the Quran if you don't understand Arabic. If you know Arabic, reading the Quran is sufficient. Read the book of the Seerah of the Prophet, of, of the Khulfa Rashidin, of the Sahabas. Hear the lectures of the scholars the videos you can hear the audios you can go on the social media of the islamic sites with authentic like islam q a you can go on my website zakirnaik.com which has been launched recently on the first of ramadan you can go to other other authentic site to the social media but see to it that you go to those social media those sites which are authentic so this will keep you reminding of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the beloved prophet of the akhirah and we see to it that keeps you on the straight path this was in short the guidance that i can give to the viewers regarding the activities of from this ramadan to next ramadan so that our ibadah increases our closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases and inshallah our chances of entering the jannah also increases